Good afternoon. Welcome to Coronavirus in Our Mental Health. Today is October 26, 2022, and I'm Ken Burtness in Haleiwa, coming to you from the North Shore. Uh, we've got a great program for you today. It's called The uh, Joy of Creating Art. But before we get to that, uh, I need to do a coronavirus update, as usual. Uh, good and bad news for Hawaii. Uh, the bad news is that our new cases are up almost twice what it was two weeks ago. So we're up now in the, in the 200s. And so that's not good news. Uh, the good news is that there were no deaths this past week. So zero deaths in the last seven days. So that was quite good. Now, this has happened before, and part of it is an artifact of the, the fact that we collect data weekly, and then we do an average per day. So next week, it may be higher. But uh, for today, it is very good news indeed. Now, the rise in new cases, uh, we need to worry a little bit about because the holidays are coming up, and also the surf is up. When the surf is up, uh, more tourists, more crowds, more surf meets, things get uh, hectic in Hawaii during the winter as well it should. And it's a wonderful thing to be here living in Hawaii during the winter, that's for sure. But we have to be careful of the coronavirus. The other thing we need to really look at is our boosters. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that what we're seeing overall over the last two and a half years, we're looking at a lot of people got vaccinated. Uh, two thirds of the people in the country got vaccinated, but it fell off to one third got their first booster. And the experts expect there's gonna be even less uh, people that are getting this second booster. The trouble is this second booster is very important because it has a special part of it. It's called a bivariant booster. And the bi means it also attacks uh, the, the beta four and five uh, variant from Omicron, which are very, very infectious. So we have to be careful of those and the booster is a way to do that. The other thing is you will continue to be inundated with long-term data news. For instance, uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at how this has affected our kids at school and what the pandemic has done, of course, with virtual learning and being out of school and back and forth that has been going and the uncertainty. Uh, our students have done not so well on their tests and on their learning. Uh, and that's a big hurdle that we have to go through and deal with, but we can do that. We can do that mostly if we stay positive and we get the idea that we can do this. And uh, one of the wonderful things about today's program is uh, my good friend and special guest, Patrice uh, Faderspiel, and she's going to talk to us about how we can do something that many of us never thought we could do, and that is paint. Uh, so I'd like to welcome, uh, heartily, uh, my friend, uh, Patrice. Welcome to the show. Aloha, Ken. I'm so happy to be here with you. The, uh, uh, I was just going to mention the fact that uh, Patrice does two group emails hmm. uh, every month, and one of them is called The Art of Aloha, and one of them is called Making Meaning Monthly. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> that's hard for me to pronounce, but it's a great, it's a great group email, and in that, she imparts a lot of her not only knowledge, but talent uh, and encouragement to people to take up painting, which some people have during the uh, during the coronavirus, but many people have thought about it and not quite made that leap. So uh, we're going to talk about that during this thing. And Patrice, if it's okay with you, I'd like us to start off with uh, your aloha, your art of aloha, which I love. Maybe we okay. get to from there. Sure. Um... Art of Aloha. Uh, Aloha is so much more than just a greeting. It's really a way of life. Uh, I think it's more about heart-centered living and consideration for others. It's got a lot of kindness built into it. So that's where the Art of Aloha came from. That, and to be completely honest, when I first moved here and was starting my business and I needed a website, I thought, well, no one will ever be able to find me if I use my last name. <laughs> I need something better. <laughs> so art of aloha. And really, um, when I paint, I do paint from the heart. I, I'm an intuitive painter. I follow my heart. I follow the signs that I receive as I go on a walk or um, when something catches my eye, 
if there's a spark of enough of a spark of interest, that's what I paint. I have a really hard time painting what something else wants somebody else might want me to paint. Although if I can find my avenue in, if I can find that little piece, that spark, then it's great fun. Um, and I do that when I do my pet portraits. And I know we have one pet portrait um, on the list. Uh, number 12, I think it is. There you go. Thank you. Um, uh, whenever somebody gives me their pets to paint, a photo of their pets to paint, I, I just clue right into the energy of the love in those pets. And that's what shows up on the paper. Well, you know, the thing that uh, really caught my eye the other day was uh, the unlikely topic of your painting was the cracks in the uh, sidewalk and in yes. the driveways. <laughs> I love that. And I love the painting that came from that. And uh, tell us a little bit about unlikely or hidden things that most people don't see that you can pick up and make something wonderful out of. Well, during the pandemic, um, and Eric, I think uh, number four is a sidewalk moment painting. Uh, during the pandemic, I did a lot more walking than I have in general lately before or after, unfortunately. And I would take the same route every day. I'd go up Makiki Heights Drive, turn around and come back down. And every day I found myself taking photographs of the flowers, true, but more photos of the cracks in the sidewalk and the cracks in the road. And I realized that they were design elements, that the cracks just were interesting shapes and they caught my attention. And this went on for the entire pandemic. And I finally thought, well, I'm, I would take photos of flowers and photos of cracks. How can I combine the two? And I decided, um, NPR has their driveway moments. Why couldn't we have our sidewalk moments? <laughs> <laughs> so I did a, a very small series that I called my sidewalk moment paintings. And that was the Heliconia sidewalk moment. So oh, Beautiful. And <clears throat> I love the colors in that. <clears throat> you do so well with colors. Can you talk a little bit about colors? They're fantastic oh, in your paintings. I love color. I'm a colorist. And a lot of people are really surprised when I tell them that my paintings are watercolor. They think they must be acrylics or oils because the colors are so vibrant. But it really has nothing to do with the medium as much as it has to do with the way you use the paint and learning how to use the, the color wheel properly and how to play with colors and how to make them brighter. And I did a lot of that uh, by taking classes and by experimenting. But I think the, the clue for me is uh, I know a painting is done when it feels done, when it, I want my paintings to feel alive, like they could, like you can feel the energy of them. And so it takes enough color and the color with watercolor is done in thin layers, which is why I call myself a slow painter. It takes a while to build up the layers um, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. So everybody paints differently and that's the beauty of painting. You you want to find your own way to paint. You also talked about, uh, in addition to that, you also talked about balancing, uh, which I found interesting. And your, your paintings are always well balanced. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you achieve that? Well, you know, every job that we have in life, I think, leads to the next one. And the 10 years prior to my move here to become a painter, I was working for a catalog company and working with design elements on a page. And I learned a lot about design then, and I continue to learn about a lot about design, but um, that's how balance is achieved when you can find design. And there is one of my paintings, um, number two, the balancing act is one of the first ones I did during the coronavirus shutdown. And to me, the, the globe or the orb on top of the cone is not touching the cone. And that's important to me in the painting. It's kind of hovering above and sometimes we'll get way out of balance, way out of whack, but there is a midpoint for us to come back to. And I think that's the part that I like to emphasize that it doesn't really matter how far out of whack you get, you can come home <laughs> back to yourself, back to your inner self. That's great. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that <clears throat> when we had talked before, um, 
I always found interesting in the fact that <clears throat> your paintings are not only balanced, but uh, you attend to not only the, the main subject that tends to be central, but you also attend to the foreground and background. And uh, you find things that's happening all over the canvas. And sometimes that changes that I see in the art of Aloha, where you're sort of zooming in on one area, but then as you, the painting progresses, it expands and we see different things in it. How do you do that? That's wonderful. <laughs> well, you know, I think, I think it's part of just the way I look at life. I, I look for things or I try to be aware of things that are capturing my interest and see where that thread might take me. I think when you are when you look at my abstract paintings in particular, you'll see more of that kind of thing. Um, which one? Live Lightly, Love Deeply, number eight. It might be a really good one for that. That is a full sheet painting. So it's 22 by 30 inches. And it started out with me just playing with trying to find out how clear I can keep my colors. So I'm working primarily with oranges and blues in that piece, which are complementary colors. And when they are side by side, they make one another bright, but when they mix, they will dull down. So this painting, I started really, I started out by just throwing wet paint on wet paper and just to see what would happen. And the more I kept looking at it as I was building the color, the more I kept finding in that painting. And it's with most of my abstracts, the more you look at them, the more you will see there's like a giant angel in there, there's hearts, there's birds, there's butterflies, there's um, all kinds of creatures. There's a big turtle head almost right in the middle. There's all kinds of things, but they weren't intentional they were discovered. And I love that about painting. You get to discover your painting. You know, the, the trouble with that for us uh, who non-painters is that it takes courage to do the things that you do. Um, and I think fear plays a big part in sort of us staying away from painting. We're afraid we're going to fail. We're afraid we're going to reach a point where it just stops and our inspiration leaves us like a bird leaving the you know, the house <laughs> through the window or something. And uh, how do you deal with that that fear? Uh, and how do you help other people that come to your, uh, your email sites uh, and group uh, meetings? How do you help them deal with that fear so they actually can go ahead and try things like you're telling us about? Well, first and foremost, um, I, I like to remind everybody that it's just a piece of paper I don't care how much money it costs. I don't care how much the supplies cost. It's just a piece of paper and you're going to get through this. Um, the other thing I, I was thinking about today, no matter what I do, there's, there is always going to be some sort of resistance. If, because I think with painting, you have the opportunity to grow and to learn more about yourself. And Sometimes that feels exciting, and sometimes it feels like an adventure, and sometimes it feels like a scary Halloween haunted house. So depending on how you feel about it, you can maybe shift that fear to more of excitement. Um, it's the same kind of feeling in the body, but we give it a different name. So if you can call it adventure or call it excitement, you can have a better chance of, oh, let's go on this adventure today, rather than, oh my God, I'm looking at a big blank piece of paper. You know, it's way more fun depending on how you cue it up in your mind. And another aspect of what I like to do is um, take it in small bites. So right now I wanna be doing more writing and it's hard for me to find a big clump of time to write. So. I'm giving myself 15 minute segments for writing. And I don't care how much I write or what I write. I just have to write for 15 minutes. And if you do that with painting, you'll be amazed at what you can get done in 15 minutes. Time is so elastic. When you're having fun, you will get so much more done. And if you just relax and breathe into it, Maybe say a little like, this is my intention for these 15 minutes is to just have fun. Go have fun. Have fun with paint and paper. 
and water. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and that's exactly you know what you're what we do in uh, you know when we get together for writers and uh, uh, and we write by ourselves. And what I find in <clears throat> in writing is I try to do those daily things like you're talking about. But sometimes as I'm doing the daily things, all of a sudden, like with your painting, something new comes up mm -hmm. and I'm just sort of carried away and <clears throat> I get this joyful feeling and uh, it just goes on. And I'd say, OK, well, whatever's coming up, I'm going to put aside because I'm going to follow this. And, yeah, that's your adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't come that day, that's OK. You just stop after that 15 minutes and the adventure will come eventually. And, well, that's that's so true. And just knowing, you know, you only need to have an adventure happen once. I think it's called intermittent with dogs. What's it called? I don't know. Intermittent um, praise, I guess. It's kind of like once you feel the adventure and know it's possible, it's easier to keep going. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to have that reinforcement every time that you do it. <clears throat> in fact, it's even stronger, like you're saying, if it's done intermittently, because you can say, well, it didn't happen today, but it might happen tomorrow. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> like the lottery. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I hope our chances of an adventure are a lot better than the lottery. That's for oh, sure. Oh, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe now's a good time to go to uh, making me meaning monthly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that uh, would be... Yeah, yeah, that uh, that really attracted me as a psychologist because uh, you're working with abstracts and you're asking the people who are with you to look inside mm -hmm. and find their particular take on that abstract. And that's a wonderful, uh, not only artistic tool, but psychological tool. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about how that happened and, and what you're finding as you go along with that, because I know you've been at it for a while. Yeah, um, so the Making Meaning Monthly paintings actually started out as Making Meaning Monday paintings. And for a whole year, I did it on the first, uh, every Monday, I would do a small painting, like a little mandala, and I would send it out to a small group of people. It's about 200 people. Anybody can join or drop off my newsletters anytime they want to but we have about 200 people getting the making meaning monthly paintings they started out because i wanted to feel like i had more meaning in life that there was more meaning to life and that i was being of more service to life and it seemed to me a good way to just have a little bit more involvement having other people finding more meaning in their lives too. So I've never told people how to look at them. I just send out an image and invite them to look at the meaning or look at the painting in any way, just take note of whatever comes up for them. And it's been so rewarding to see how some people have moved from just making note of the individual pieces that they see in the email to then figuring out how that fits into their life and what they want to see in life. And it's been really fun. A few people do poetry. Two or three people now are doing poetry. And there are people from all over the country and even from the Mariana Islands are taking part in this. So it's really a lot of fun. It's that self-exploration thing that's so wonderful. And I, <clears throat> and I think I, I see that clearly in your paintings, the that exploration. And when you can pass that on to other people, that's terrific. Uh, how does uh, any comments from the people who are doing this about how it affected uh, their lives and where they went with all this? Well, you know, I think the fact that they're continuing to work with me on it and they're going more and more in depth. Um, we have one fellow who's an architect in the Northwest and his poetry, he didn't start out doing poetry at all. And I know that he's had some rough times the past year or two. So, um, and sometimes if, if I forget to send one out, people will email me. So I know that they're, they're looking forward to them. So I'm, I think, I think that's about it. <laughs> I think it's been helpful to a lot of people. And we also have, there's a couple people who, when they have had trouble, have asked the community to just send them a little bit of love or light or prayers. 
Um, and I think that that's really neat too, because it has become, even though I have only met a few of the people on these, on the newsletter that we, it feels really like a community, which has been really nice. Can we talk a little bit, can we follow that up and talk a little bit about how art brings people together? Because I think that's, that's very true. And I think it's, uh, you know, I think that you've really helped in that area. And, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Tamara was on the thing and she talked about the uh, joy that she had when people gathered together and painted together. Uh, that was one part of it. I'm sure you see other things happening from your standpoint as well as how to bring people together through art. Oh, well, one of the most important, one of the most fun things I do is twice a week I paint in public. And while I'm painting in public, I'm also set up to sell my art while I'm there. But the number of people who will stop and just talk to me about the painting is so gratifying. And they they really enjoy watching. Of course, I think watching anybody paint, I don't care who you are, is kind of like watching a magician because you don't know what that person is going to do next. So there's a, a magical quality to it. I have one painting that I haven't published yet, um, but I, it's part of the Paradigm Project and I'm, I made it look like DNA. And I have had like six and seven year olds go, is that DNA? I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> Can, can we talk about that uh, paradigm uh, paradigm move that you've we've talked about before where uh, you're in one place and all of a sudden it opens up on where we can go from here to to the next place? Well, and I just I see the whole world as being in a big paradigm shift right now. And I think we are shifting from things like competition to creativity to collaboration from duality to unity. Um, I could use a lot of other words that would be a lot more triggering for people <laughs> that I'd rather not go into. But the, the fun thing is when I first started working on these about a year ago and I would tell people I'm painting us through the paradigm shift, they would kind of look at me quizzically. But now when I tell them I'm painting us through the paradigm shift and the orange and blue painting behind me is a good example of it, um, they, they seem to accept it a lot more easily. Like it's not a big deal. It's like, oh, that's cool. What is, how are you doing that? Or what does it mean? Or what does this painting mean? And, uh, I'm doing it through the complementary colors of orange and blue, which when they're right next to each other, make each other brighter again, when they're mixed together, they dull one another down. Now that doesn't mean that we need to keep each other separate. But I think as one person I met last week when I was discussing this painting, um, he said, oh, so maybe we need that dynamic tension a little bit to make one another better. So it's not making one or the other of us wrong in any way. It's finding a way for all of us to fit together and to make the world a better place. And to shine. Yes. <laughs> to keep, keep alive. <laughs> now, Patrice, you've talked about the one of the two paintings behind you. I think you owe it to us to talk about the other one, because especially okay. I love the greens and, and yellows <laughs> there. Tell us about that. OK, well, that one is a banana painting. Um, I think it's called Going Bananas. And <laughs> <laughs> the funny story is I, I have several banana paintings that I started at least 10 years ago, and they were in my flat files. And I took them out one day and I thought, huh, why didn't I finish this? <laughs> and honestly, they were 95% done. They really didn't need that much work, but I, I wasn't happy with them however many years ago and I put them away. And then when I took them out again, I thought, hmm, this is pretty cool. So uh, that's another good thing to know. When you are painting anything, every painting, has an adolescent stage where you just want to bury it or put it <laughs> away. So just you have to you either paint through it or, or live through it like we did at adolescence. Um, but don't give up. You, you will outgrow that. <laughs> <laughs> and your parents will survive it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, terrific. Well, Patrice, we're getting toward the end of our show. I wanted to ask you if you had uh, a final words, stuff to uh, to leave us with, to leave the people who are watching us with, and about your feelings about art and uh, how people can enjoy art, even in the most difficult of times, like the times that we're going through. Well, I think the thing about art is everybody has their own favorites, the, the things you like the most. And that's great because if it touches you, that's what counts. Um, and creating art for any reason, I have, I, you know, it's funny, I've, I've thought about art therapy a lot. I've never gone to an art. Well, I did actually, when I was in college, my first therapist was an art therapist. And so I guess maybe that's where some of my introspection in the subject comes from. But art is a very, it's healing. Um, I have a lot of people say, I have no talent at all. And uh, it, you know, talent is something that is grown. You can have some to start with, but even if you don't feel like you do, you probably do. We are all creative. We are all creating our world, our lives in one way or another, whether it be with numbers or colors or whatever. So give it a try. You really, um, you know, even if you do some bad five minute art. <laughs> just <laughs> bad to, five just minute art. Out. <laughs> I had one teacher who said, you, I was a drawing class. She said, you all have 100,000 bad drawings in you. It's it's a good idea to just start getting rid of them now. Get them out on the paper. <laughs> You're not going to go away <laughs> unless you get them out. I'll have to use that for my writing groups. That sounds yeah. like a good way to go. <laughs> uh, Patrice, it's been wonderful. And we're toward the very end. And I just want to thank you for, for being with me and, and with the audience and sharing some of your wonderful creativity and appreciation of art. I just, I love your paintings and we'll continue looking forward to the uh, monthly meaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, help me out on that again. <laughs> Making meaning monthly. <laughs> Making meaning monthly, yes. <laughs> and the I Art of it. Aloha, there's two different <laughs> newsletters, so yeah. <laughs> I look forward to those and thank you again for being with us today. Thank you, it's been my pleasure. And thanks to all the people who support this program. Uh, uh, Jay and uh, Haley and Eric uh, and Michael and everybody else uh, who helps make this program uh, fun to do and also a way to reach out to people and uh, try to talk about things that matter. And certainly art has mattered today. <laughs> Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.